<laughs> Welcome to the Nerds Cantos, everybody. We're going to talk about some Spider-Man. That's what we're talking about. Real fast, got to thank the lords at Anchor for putting this show on Spotify and Apple Music and all the nonsense. They put it on, like, everything. I think it's, like, Google Music as well. Oh, wow. Um, like, I, I think so, because that's their job. Uh, and that's great. But Nolan said it. Oh, I should mention as well, Stewie is not going to be here for this episode, which I mentioned last episode, but I'm mentioning it again, just in case. He has not seen Spider-Man yet. Like, a little bitch. I don't Saying know it. how he, out the of all people, can't, like, just he, hasn't seen it. He didn't like Far From Home, so... He, he didn't... You good, Nolan? You got you were cutting out there. Are you good? I don't know about that. That's that, that's that he whack. Like far from home? That's yeah. whack. That's whack, bro. We don't have to get into that. We we don't need to get into that. He's not here. You know he can't defend himself. You know, but look at you. I'm being the, the upstanding host. All right. <clears throat> um, you sure. Are. Real fast, I guess before we get into it, to explain our opinions. Uh, how big of a Spider-Man fan are you, Nolan? Uh, enough, I'd say. I'm not, like, crazy big Spider-Man fan. I'm just yeah. casual. I'm casual okay. level. Yeah, see, I've read every single Spider-Man comic book ever published. That's a lie. That, that's, that's a lie. I've read most of them. Um, too many of them, some would say. That besides the point, uh, how, what are your opinions on, like, all the Spider-Man movies? Like, who's your favorite... What's your favorite of the... So, Tom Holland's my favorite. I've liked probably all the Spider-Man movies, honestly. Okay. Well, judging on, you know, I saw, you know, Amazing Spider-Man and, you know, the OGs yeah, you saw when I was yeah, young. Yeah. So I have a... My point of view on them is pretty, you know, just like, ah, I liked them there, as a there, kid. There, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you, what you're saying is, most importantly, you liked Homecoming and Far From Home. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, recently, I, w- I watched, like, all the Spider-Man movies recently in preparation for No Way Home. Real <sighs> fast, by the way. No Way Home spoilers. I'm co- we're, no, we're not even playing that game. There's spoilers going on in this video. But I watched them in preparation. I like the Tobey Maguire movies. They're pretty stupid, though. They're kind of dumb. They're a little cheesy. But, like, there's a charm to the cheese. Yeah. I mean, the Andrew Garfield movies are... They're something. They're like an Andrew. experience. I, he's a great okay. Spider-Man. It's just that yes. the movie is where... He's also... I think Andrew's the best actor out of the three. Like, at, from an but acting standpoint, for yes, sure. Is, yeah. Yeah. Um, which isn't saying the other two are bad. It's just like Andrew is like leagues ahead, I think. Um, maybe not leagues, but he's a lot better. So um, more just a gifted actor, I think. Yes. And then traditionally, or like normally... And still is. Tom was my favorite. And I also like Homecoming and Far From Home. The only Spider-Man movie I personally hate is Amazing 2. Oh, and then obviously I hate Venom and Venom 2. But like, whatever. You know? We're not yeah. We're not talking about those. Um, so getting into No Way Home. You want to run it down chronologically? What what'd you think of the opening? Opens right where Far From Home left off. Uh, I liked it. Identity's I mean, out. Kind of hectic. Identity out. I, um... I think he did some dumb shit by just not going straight to uh, his place of residence, but you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, like how he, he kind of like went on the just bridge or whatever. On the bridge and just sat there and st- just, just get looked at. He needed to get out. Of you there. don't like but, the like, dude scene where he calls Ned or whatever, and then they're like, "Dude!" and they scream at each other. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I like that scene a lot. Actually, that was funny. I should yeah. mention real fast, Nolan. You've seen it once. I have seen it four times. Yes, you have. Uh, and I'm going a fifth on Friday, and that's it. I'm no, I'm not seeing it anymore after that. I'm done after that. Uh, you going family or? Yeah, I'm going with my dad. He hasn't seen it yet, so. Um. Interesting. Yeah, uh, at this point, I think I've seen it with every human being I could possibly want to see it with. <laughs> um. And most every time, except the first time, I had a good theater experience. Uh, which yeah. We could talk about later our theater experience, Dolan. <laughs> um, so that's some funny stuff. But yeah, going through it, Peter's identity's out. There's, you know, he gets home, whatever. There's the like interrogation scene at the police precinct, which I actually really liked. I thought that was fun. Yeah. Well done. 
And then we get one of the peak moments of the movie after that. Matt Murdock, Daredevil, Charlie Cox, Daredevil shows up. Uh huh. That was awesome. That was, that was so crazy. so so cool. Did our theater clap? I don't remember if our theater clapped. No, I don't think they clapped. Okay. But they were like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I heard some. Oh my Devil. god. Yeah, but my first theater lost their shit. Uh, which was fun. It's always fun. I like when that happens in movies. Oh, you mm-hmm. know, I don't know. I don't have much else. He wasn't in the movie a lot. He's kind of there. He's there to say, hey, I am officially I'm back. to see you. I'm I am back, here. Baby. We are about to go crazy. Going crazy. Um, after that, you have the college, like them getting their college uh, acceptance letters and all getting rejected. Yeah. Really like I, that. I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, uh, very yeah. relatable. Because I've had that happen. So I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's happened. That's cool. Loser. Yeah, and then... Well, I didn't go to... I didn't try to go to fucking MIT. But, like, you know... I definitely would have been rejected by MIT. Bro. <laughs> they wouldn't have even sent me a letter back. And after yeah. that... Yeah. Goes to Doctor Strange. And this is really... Up to this point, the movie's... It's, the movie's, like, breakneck speed. Like, if you go piss, dude, you're missing vital scenes, I feel like. Yeah, it was very fast at that point. Um, and I feel like at the Doctor Strange stuff is when it starts to kind of... Slow down a bit. Yeah, slow down a little bit, because this is where you get to the meat of the movie, where, like, you know, Peter tries to get his identity <laughs> fixed, and it kind of fucks up the multiverse, because, <laughs> you know, that's a very Peter Parker thing to do, from my knowledge. That happens all the time. I mean, not necessarily breaking the multiverse, but like trying to f- do something and then having that like cause a villain to show up. Yeah. From here, we get the bridge scene, which was in like every trailer. They showed it off in like every TV spot. They really liked this bridge scene. What'd you think of the bridge scene? Uh, I liked it a lot, actually. Yeah. This is good. It went not how I thought it was going to go. Actually. Same, because I thought he was gonna like scrap with Doc Ock, and he—I mean, he kind of does, but it's more so him does. trying to save somebody. Yeah, which I always like in a superhero movie, because I feel like a lot of superhero movies nowadays, like nowadays, the the heroes like killing people, or they like just don't really give a shit about saving people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I thought it was interesting that like he was attempting to save this MIT lady so he could get his friends into MIT. <clears throat> And then, like, Doc Ock just shows up and causes a bunch of problems. Yeah. Now, yeah, what do you think uh, of the nanobots going onto his arms? So, see, okay, I... That's, yeah. I really like that, because I don't hate the Iron Spider suit. I actually it's not like the, it. <laughs> it's not the greatest looking, in my opinion. It's not the greatest looking, but it's cool. It's a cool idea. I love it. As, like, an idea. But it could look better. And I really like that... Like, Doc Ock took the nanotech, and then Peter could still control it. thought that was really interesting. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. Which is, I think, what you were talking about, where it's like, that's not how I, anybody expected that scene to go. Yeah, he was just like, oh. Because he idiot. just controls the arms, and is like, alright, you stop. You just stay there, okay? Stop trying to fight me. <laughs> From there, Goblin shows up. For, dude, I thought... Every time he shows up, every time I'm like, even like now I'm on my fourth viewing, I still think like we're about to get some dope ass goblin shit. And then Doctor Strange just like teleports Peter back to the sanctum and is like, okay. This is basically where like the plot rundown comes where Doctor Strange just drops the exposition on you. I think it's well done, but he just like vomits what the plot is onto you. Like basically, the spell fucked up. People who know who Peter Parker is. Or they people who know that Peter Parker is Spider Man are now coming to the MCU universe, and they're that's not good. Basically, that's basically what Doctor Strange says. He's like, "This is not great. We need to get rid of them." Yeah. So from here, you have Peter. He finds like Electro, or he yeah, he finds like Electro and Sandman, and him and Electro and Sandman kind of have like a tiny fight. Uh. We also get the black and gold suit. How'd you feel about that one? 
I was confused because I I'm gonna be honest, I kind of zoned out when he got the suit. What was the deal with him getting it? Like, okay. how did he, you know. So there's the scene earlier in the movie because normally he wears like one for Far From Home, which is like red and black. Mm-hmm. But there's a scene they show where somebody like throws paint on him, so he has like green paint on the suit, and he doesn't know how to get it out, so he just wears the suit inside out. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was inside out. Um, and then Doctor Strange gave him like the little magic gauntlet thing, so he could like send the villains back to the Sanctum Sanctorum. Mm-hmm. So that's basically all that scene is. But I will say, I really liked Electro in this movie. He acts nothing like he did in the Amazing Spider-Man Two, but I like that. Yeah, he's, he's just funny. a villain. <laughs> he's just an asshole, but he's also funny. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, Sandman was fine. I liked Sandman. I liked him. I liked he when he just... first showed up because he was still a good guy. Because yeah, he was, he a, was good a good guy. guy at the end of Spider Man Three. But yeah. he doesn't really do much at all. Yeah. They also couldn't get the actor back, so they just made him a CGI sand person the entire movie. Yeah, I was going to ask about <laughs> that next, which I wasn't really a fan of that. No, I wasn't either. But I mean. Weird. Did they you gotta do what you gotta do, right? I mean, you know. When he got his body back, what would they do for that? Okay, so that actually, I mean, obviously we get to that scene, but just cutting ahead to that scene at the end of the movie, they reused the scene from Spider Man Three. So that that they used the scene where he got his powers, but they just like changed the CG. I I thought it looked weird. They did the same thing with the lizard, by the way. When the lizard turns back to human, it's just a scene from Amazing Spider Man One. Because they couldn't get the Blizzard actor either. They could get him to voice, obviously, but they couldn't get him to, like, come and act. Because of why. COVID. Oh. Uh, yeah, COVID stuff. Which, you know, it's depressing, but, like, like I said, you gotta do what you gotta do to get your movie made, I guess. You know? So fine. Um, the CG was good, though, I want to say. For the most part, there's some shoddy CG moments, I think, at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I think it has some of the best-looking CG out there. At least for the MCU. Um, right? I don't know. Do you agree with me on that? With this mm-hmm. yeah. I do. Cool. So moving on, you know, we get... Peter gets all the villains, um, and the one he's missing is Green Goblin, which you find out that, like, he's still Norman, which they kind of do in Spider-Man 1, but, like, halfway through Spider-Man 1, they drop that. Um... But in this one, he's like Norman, and then the Goblin is like an alternate personality. Yeah. Uh, and for the Thomas most of the kids. movie, he's Norman. I thought that yeah. was interesting. I thought that was very compelling. I didn't expect that either, to be honest. Neither did I. I, I liked it. I like Norman. Yeah, I mean, Willem Dafoe is perfect. He's such a good actor. And he sells it. Like, um, really well. Yeah. There's a scene, I, you probably remember this, but the scene when he's in Feast. So, like, Peter, like, Norman goes to Feast, and he talks to Aunt May, and then, like, Peter shows up to collect Norman, basically. Yeah. And there's a scene where Aunt May is like, listen, no, you need to help these people, which I really like. I thought that was good. Like, I, I like that idea, because that is something Aunt May and Peter would do. Mm-hmm. But there's a scene where, sh- when she is telling Peter that in the background, Norman is just stuffing donuts into his jacket, like pocket, into his coat pocket. You know what I'm talking about? You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking great. I don't know why he did that. That doesn't like. I don't know. That's to me. That's so weird. But it's like, fuck yes. Also in the scene, they mention something very brief, which I know a lot of people online are mad about. But uh, Norman mentions that Oscorp does not exist in the MCU. Which that I is so there. wild. Yeah. I think they'll probably have it exist in the next movie, maybe. Because I feel like mm-hmm. you can't do Spider-Man without Osborne and Oscorp, right? I don't know. To me, that's weird. But who knows? Maybe in this universe, Oscorp just has a really late start. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, you know? Or maybe uh, Norman's dead, and then Harry starts the company or something. You know what I Like, there's stuff they could do with that. Um, moving on, they they go back to Doctor Strange's house. And this is where I think one of the coolest moments of the movie. I mean, the movie has so many cool moments. This is, like, in my top five. 
Uh, basically, Doctor Strange is telling Peter, he's like, listen, these guys are going to go back to the universe. Some of them are going to die. It doesn't matter. That's their fate. Yada, yada, yada. And Peter just can't do that. He's like, nah, we can't. Because he thinks he could save them, which he can. So he's like, I don't want to kill him. So then we kind of have like a fight between Peter and Strange. Which that is one of my really favorite badass. things in the movie. Yeah. Did you like that? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. It so I cool. thought it was... The only part I didn't like about it is the line at the end. Where Peter is like, hey, Strange, you know what's better than magic? Math. It's a little weird. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I was like, eh. Line didn't work for me, but... <laughs> I really like the visuals of, like, the mirror dimension. Which was in the first Doctor Strange, but I liked seeing it in this one. It was fun. Mm-hmm, and I did sure. like how Spider-Man, like, beat Strange. Where he actually used his brain to, like, web him up and stuff. Yeah, that was actually really neat. Yeah. It was also... I, I think an interesting way to get strange out of the movie. Cause I was wondering that, like, how are they going to get him to just leave? And I think they did a decent job of like doing that mm-hmm. from here. The movie kind of slows down even more. And I love that it does this, but they yeah, all come back does. to their apartment and Peter's just trying to like cure the villains. And this is something as like a huge Spider-Man fan and a huge fan of all the Spider-Man movies, except the amazing Spider-Man two that I really liked is that like all of them were interacting. So like Norman and Otto were talking and then like Electro and Sandman and Lizard were talking to each other. And mm-hmm. I really liked that. Although Lizard stayed in the truck. I don't know why. Lizard was useless in this movie. He was, wasn't he? Yeah, he really was. I mean, listen, I get you got to give him in there. Got to have how five villains, the feisty five, you know, I get it. It's just like Lizard and Sandman were definitely the least used. But like, mm-hmm. whatever. Okay, they what? Who cares? It's nobody's favorite villain is the Lizard, right? I mean, come on. Yeah, it's the Lizard. Right. Um. Moving on from this, we cure Doc Ock, so he kind of fixes like Chip that's making him go crazy. Which I loved. I really liked this scene because I like Doc Ock. I like Spider Man too. I thought this was a really good scene. Um, How did you feel feel about them, like, fixing Doc Ock, basically? I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I I thought it was pretty interesting how... Like, for me, I was playing the Spider-Man game. I pretty much know nothing about, like, anything that happens with anybody, right? Right. And with playing the Spider-Man game, you kind of just work alongside, you know? Yeah, you're working with him. And he's like just a dude who wants to make robo arms for like, you know, vets and shit. Cripple people, yeah. 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 And with this one, it's like, oh. You get to see him because they they switched out the corrupted chip or whatever. And he's just a good dude. He's a good dude again. Generally a good dude. Um I should mention they said some meme lines earlier. Norman says, you know, I'm something of a scientist myself. I forgot to bring that up. Oh, yeah. Which, I thought, that's the one, because there's a lot of fan service in this movie, mm-hmm. and I like that line, but that's, for me, that is the one moment where I'm like, it's too obviously fan service, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, where it's just like, okay, that's a bit forced. odd. But I liked it, it's funny, because I like that line. Um, But, you know, we cure Doc Ock. Uh, we start to cure Electro. And then as like Electro is being cured, we have what I think is my favorite scene in the whole movie. Which is the Spider-Sense scene. Yeah. Where it's on... I think it's a dolly cam is what that's called. Where it's like the way it's zoomed. And then it's like Peter's walking around the apartment because his Spider-Sense is just going off so much that he doesn't know what's happening. Um, which I just really love that. I, I feel like in all, this might be a hot take, but I feel like in all the Spider-Man movies, they never do the spider sense right, in my opinion. It's never mm-hmm. used enough to my liking as a Spider-Man fan, and I think this movie had it, uh, this movie did it right, in my opinion. This is the first they had, Yeah, it was apparent, and like you could see him actively using it. Also, quick note, there's in the scene where Doctor Strange knocks him out of his body, I don't know if you caught this, Nolan. Uh, when it's like Peter just kind of like floating in the air in like ghost form, 
Mm -hmm. If you look at his head, you can see the little spider sense lines that he has in the comic books, and they're like there in his astral projection form. Seriously? Yeah. I it's really cool. I like that. Um I don't know. I just I really like what they did with the spider sense in this movie. And then from here on out, Goblin's back, baby. Like, I love this so much, dude. Goblin is so cool in this movie. Like, how'd you feel about Goblin overall? Ruthless. <laughs> he was, we have, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was brutal. So good. We get the apartment scene, like the apartment fight scene, which everybody online is talking about because, like, it's one of the best in the, in the MCU, I think. Just in general, in comics. Comic book movie. Sh- comic. the shit out of him. There's a couple things I want to talk about in specific. There's he doesn't move like Peter doesn't move from the PS4 game, which I don't know if you caught this, Nolan. He does the move. I don't know if you've even seen this in the game, but there's a move yeah, in the game. The stomp. Yeah, yeah, the stomp where mm-hmm. he like, you know, is above him and then like webs him, like webs the ground and then pulls himself to the ground. I really like that. So that I really like really that. Scene. Awesome. The other one of the other scenes I want to talk about, which also everybody's talking about, is when Peter's just like punching the goblin and he's unaffected and is just like laughing at him. Mm-hmm. Perfect goblin moment. I love the Green Goblin. He's like top two, top three of my Spider-Man villains. If I had to make a ranking, I think this is the number one. Number one, if number one is either Goblin or Craven, I I can't decide between them right now. I'd have to like go back and read the like most important stories to really pick. But I love I read the goblin. One of the Craven books. <clears throat> yeah, which Actually. one? Don't remember. Okay. Oh, well, wait a minute. I think it might have been the first one. Interesting. Craven's cool. Um, I love Craven. I also love Goblin. Like I said, and I think this movie. Goblin's obviously the main villain of this movie, and it pulled it off. He's perfect. He's better than he was in Spider-Man One, I think. Mm. Which just might be a hot take. I don't care. I'm full of hot takes in this video. That's me. I, I got Spider Man hot takes. From here, we get a very important scene. Now, I want to get your thoughts on this because I knew this was, I was spoiled for this due to like leaks and rumors before the movie came out. So I knew this character was going to die. How did you, like, did you see this coming? Did you think Aunt May was going to die? No. Didn't actually. What kind of emotions were you feeling in this scene? Just like, oh, wow, yeah, it was just wow. Um, it's crazy, dude. I think they did a really good job of this, like death. And she says the line. She says, "The great power there must also come great responsibility." By the mm-hmm. way, she says the comic line. Uh. Which I think is interesting because everything else like shortens it, but he said the full line. This is just like fun little comic nerd stuff. Mm-hmm. But I really like that because I know for a long time people's big complaint about MCU Spider Man is that he doesn't have an Uncle Ben, or if he does, they don't bring him up. And something I really like is that instead of just doing the Uncle Ben story again, they made like this home trilogy, his origin trilogy kind of where it's like all an origin story. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I really like that from in my theater. When she said the line, people cheered and like lost their minds, (laughs) which is fine. But uh, personally I cried. During this scene, dude, that shit, that shit was sad. It was for me, not least. happy. Um, I don't know. Aunt May deaths get me, and I it's just because I've read all the comics, and it's just like that's Aunt May, bro. Like, damn. Yeah. But after this, I don't even know if you remember this scene, but we get my second favorite scene in the whole movie, which is just Peter in the rain, crying and that, watching. Yeah. Raw dog. He's just like he's just watching the <clears throat> the Daily Bugle news feed. Oh my mm-hmm. god, that looked amazing. I love that. 
And then immediately after that, two Spider-Men show up. Fucking no breaks. They're just like, you get raw emotions and then more emotions for the audience to feel with Toby and Andrew showing up. Yep. Now, how'd you feel about this? I absolutely loved Andrew's appearance. Mm. With, 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 he was like, all right, crawl, crawl around, crawl around. And he's like, seriously? Yeah, she's like throwing bread at him, and he was like, I have the tingle thing, it just doesn't work with bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really liked Andrew in this movie, by the way, just overall. He was so good, like, he was finally able to, like, use his, like, acting skills in a good way. Yeah, he was (laughs) funny, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know, he had good lines. And then Toby shows up, which is also really cool. I don't know. It's fun to see. It's like weird because I never thought I'd ever see them both interact. And it's like, <laughs> damn. But they do. It's crazy. Um, after this, we get another sad scene with Tom Holland and Spider Man where like MJ and Ned hug him. It's also pretty sad. And then, like, from here on out, the third act starts. This is where we basically get the final battle and then also the three Spider Man interacting. So they have like the science scene where they're trying to like fix up the cures for the. Villain. I enjoyed that one a lot. So good, because they're just like making jokes mm-hmm. at each other and they're talking about like their past experiences. Like I really loved when Toby shoots his webs and they're all like, like Andrew like looks at him. He's like, "That came out of your body!" Like it's just like, <laughs> I like that stuff. How do you make it? <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Know. And then we just get the final battle, which, like, against all the villains. So, you know, they will run it down fast. We can talk about our favorite moments from the final battle, but run down the final battle. They cure Sandman. They cure your lizard. They cure Electro. Or, well, Doc Ock actually shows up, and you think Doc Ock is going to be a bad guy, but you find out he's not. His chip did not break. And then he, like, he's the one who fixes Electro. So, like, out of that, that like chunk of scenes what was like your some of your favorite moments <clears throat> my absolute favorite moment all right so it's when at the beginning of the fight when they're getting their asses beat you know they were not <laughs> good and doing good and they all group up and he's like look we've got to start acting as a team i know you guys haven't done it but i have i was an avenger and the whole their avenger joke happened blah 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 yeah, yeah. and then whenever they're like okay cool and work together and then they jumped out and they started web slinging and all of them web sling like they sh- both shot each other's webs and like flung off of each other and I yeah they, all three of them did not both so cool. yeah they were all like working with each other's webs and stuff yeah the trust the, the tingle thing. yeah i think my like favorite my favorite moment from that is um is when they all group up or whatever and they're all talking and Tom Holland's like, Okay, I'm Peter one and he looks at Toby, he's like, You're Peter two and then Andrew's like Peter three and he like shakes his heads and does like Andrew Spider Man things because he's always been weird and eccentric for some reason. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. And the Avengers joke I thought was really funny. Um as well as them talking about their past villains. I really like that. Yeah. Aliens in space. And yeah. Like, Bro. And then Andrew's like, man, I'm really lame. I fought a guy, a Russian guy in a metal rhinoceros machine. <laughs> and then Toby's like, you're not lame. You're amazing. And that he was... says it like three yeah. times because yeah. you know, it's the title of his movies. Ha ha funny. But it is. I thought it was really funny. Um. I also want to mention Toby and Doc Ock had like a reunion and I loved that. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really good. Just them talking. I I said it earlier, but like I never thought I would ever see them like talk again as those characters. And that's so weird to see, but I love it. It was so cool. Um, And then we have like, we have the final battle where like Goblin shows up and it's, Tom Holland, Peter versus Goblin. And another great fight, I think. Um, It's just brutal, man. These fights are just... Like, Tom's just laying the smack down on Goblin in this fight. Like, he is not taking any chances. For real. And, and he goes to kill him. And then Toby steps in. Um, Which another... I, just This movie is filled with great moments, but it's like, damn. 
That's great. Toby gets stabbed. Uh, it's like a fake. I mean, they don't really try to fake you out, but you're meant for like a split second to think he's dying. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, mm-hmm. they're not really trying to make you think he's dead, but like for that one second, it's like, oh, did they just kill Toby? I'm glad that, they didn't. I'm glad they didn't. Because it, it, that's unnecessary, and also the internet would hate this movie. Uh, after that, yeah. they cure Goblin. Did you have something you were going to say? No. Okay, so they cure Goblin. I really like that. It was good. Uh, and then the, the multiverse breaks, and like you that see Spider-Man awesome. villains. So you see like comic accurate Rhino, Kraven, Scorpion, and others. I couldn't make out any of the others. I think I saw Hobgoblin in there. Maybe. It's hard to tell, though, because they're like silhouettes. I mean, there was Rhino, I think. Yeah, Rhino, Craven, Scorpion. Yeah. Those are the big ones I saw. Um, And you have something that surprised me. And I want to know how you felt about this. Tom Peter is basically like, all right, Strange, to fix the multiverse, make everyone forget Peter Parker existed. How did you think that was going to happen at the end of this movie? Is that what you were expecting to happen? No, not at all. What were you like? What were you, what were your thoughts when that was happening? It's like, damn, what the fuck are they going to do? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, man. I really did not expect that at all. Like that is, it baffles me. Even on like my fourth viewing, I'm just like, damn, dude, they're they're ballsy over at Marvel. Like they're just doing it. Um, and you get the coffee scene where Peter goes to a coffee shop and acts like a fucking weirdo because he wants to tell MJ who he is, but then he thinks to himself and he's like, you can't do it. He's Spider-Man, great power, great responsibility. You know, you can't be doing that. So then he walks out. And literally nobody remembers him. His aunt is dead. This is a dark ending, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really sad. Yeah, it's a depressing ending. And then immediately, I don't care because they show the greatest live action Spider Man suit ever put to screen for like 10 seconds. <laughs> I love it. it what do so you think cool. about that suit at the end? It was nice. It's the most comic accurate one we've seen. It's very colorful, shiny. It's, it's very shiny. I loved it. Um, mm-hmm. and that's the end of the movie. Now, like, thoughts overall? What were your overall thoughts on this movie? Wonderful. Just simply you... wonderful. Okay, what what number would you give it? Ten. Okay, see, I'm in the same boat. I'd give it a ten as well. If you... Okay, MCU ranking. Where is this in, like, Two. the ranks of your MCU movie? Okay, behind Endgame, right? Yes. Okay, see, it's number one for me. But I'm a Spider-Man fan, though, so, like, it's easy to please. When it comes to this. But Jesus, man, I want to say as well, fourth viewing, and I'm still looking forward to my fifth viewing. This movie does not get boring at all. Like, really? I'm still, Yeah, I'm still going. I'm like, hell yeah, man. I thought it would, too. I was going into that fourth viewing, and I was like, man, I don't know. I don't know. But then I watched it, and I was like, nah, I know. Fifth, let's go, baby. Like, come on. <laughs> um, so that's exciting. Now... Real fast, let's talk the Venom end credit scene. I thought it was pretty funny. I, and I was like, it. I liked it too. I was like, ah, that's funny as fuck. Now I want to mention when we saw it, the entire movie there is this dude behind us who, like, occasionally when something would happen, would make noises. So, like when Toby showed up, he was like, "Now this is a movie. This is a movie." And then, like, anytime something fun would happen, he'd be like, "God damn, yeah!" Like you just say stuff. And he I guess screamed redemption. With, oh yeah, he screamed uh, redemption yeah. with Andrew caught MJ. It's another good moment we didn't bring up. Um, and then I guess he's a Venom fan because <laughs> do you remember like... exactly what he screamed? <sighs> he said that was garbage, right? Yeah, I think he was like, "Now this is fucking garbage, man!" Like he was mad because so if anybody, if you're watching this video, you didn't watch the movie. What are you doing? But if you didn't watch the movie, at the end of Venom 2, Venom is brought into the MCU. 
and you find out if you watch this movie that it's because the Doctor Strange spell. And Doctor Strange undoes, you know, he gets rid of the spell, right? So Venom goes back to his universe, and that's, I guess, what pissed the dude off. But I'm happy about this. One, because I hate those movies. Those movies are terrible. And two, he left a piece of him behind, which means MCU symbiote saga, let's go, man. That's, that's all I've wanted for years, and we're finally getting it. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah. awesome. And I'm assuming that's what's next for Spider-Man. I would assume. I, I think, which we can get into right now, what, what both of us think is next for like, because they've already confirmed they're working on another trilogy, the college trilogy, which is what we're going to call it. Um, I'm thinking what's next is Black Suit and Craven. <sighs> that makes sense in Craven's yeah. Hunt sort of thing. Craven, or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what they'll do with Craven, but I think... If I had to guess for the trilogy, I'm thinking he gets the black suit in the next movie, he fights Kraven. I think in the second movie of this new trilogy, he'll get rid of the black suit while fighting Scorpion. And then maybe in the last one, he'll fight like Mr. Negative or something like that. That's my thoughts. That's who I think is coming up. Okay. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I just know there's going to be some Venom shit. Yeah. There will be Venom shit. I guess he might also fight Venom. You know, I suppose if he gets rid of the black suit, he'll probably fight Venom, but like, eh, I don't personally really want, like, I, I don't want to see that. I feel like I've seen enough of that. Yeah. Um. Right, we've seen it twice. Twice? Once? Well, we've seen it once, but we've seen Venom do Venom things. Uh, and I don't need to see any more Venom because those movies have fouled fucking Venom. I will say, I say I don't want to see any more Venom. I'm extremely hypocritical because I would love an Amazing Spider-Man 3 where he fights Tom Hardy Venom. That would be cool. Don't I think be. they're going to do it, by the way, as well. I really think Sony's going to make it. I think we're going to have, like, two Spider-Man movies at the same time. It's going to be so weird. I love that. I've been waiting for this. Because... I wish I had these conversations recorded, but for years I've talked about uh, with like other friends that like Sony should stop fucking with the MCU and they should let the MCU do MCU Spider-Man stuff and then they should do their own Spider-Man stuff. Which now they can do because there has been an uproar on like Twitter and every social media platform where everybody is like saying make Amazing Spider-Man 3. So I think they'll do it. We'll see. And I think that'd be kind of neat to see that Spider-Man fight that shitty Venom. <laughs> Maybe we can have Andrew beat up Jared Leto as well. I'd That's like a, that. That would yeah, be nice. Right? That'd be fun. Ass. Um, the last thing we got to talk about. Oh, I have one more thing, or two more things. Do you think in the next MCU Spider-Man trilogy, they'll give him the more, like, traditional Spider-Man cast. So, like, Gwen Stacy, Harry Osborn. Like, you think those I think he'll meet them all at college. I hope, dude. And then MJ. I think, you think MJ and Spidey are going to have See, some sort of weird breakup in college and Gwen Stacy think, and they get back together? And then... I don't know if they'll kill Gwen. I don't think they will. Because I feel like he he knows he knows that he knows and, she died. Andrews yeah, so. died and he's gonna try and do that. Dude, that's the weird thing because he knows all these characters now. Like he knows Otto, he knows Osborne, he knows Electro's name, he knows Sandman name, Sandman. He knows like the Lizard's name. Like he knows all of these guys now. Plus, he knows Toby fought a black goo suit, and he also knows that Andrew's girlfriend was murdered and her name was Gwen. So like. I think it's going to be kind of weird. Because, like, what if he meets Gwen and then she likes him, but he's just like, I can't talk to you at all because you're going to fucking die, right? Like, I think that could be, that could lead to some interesting shenanigans. Mm. I think he'll get back with MJ, though. Like, at the end, I think that's, that'll be the end of, like, ending relationship. Just because, like, that's how it is in the comics. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he'll get with Gwen and then stay with Gwen, which I would I wouldn't mind personally. Do something different, you know. 
removes Zendaya from the screen. Yeah, get her at it. I actually like her. She was <laughs> yeah. really good in this movie. She was very good. I like her. She's a good actor. All the actors were good. Yeah, they were all. They all did a great job. Um, and last thing doesn't even have to do with Spider Man, but Doctor Strange two got a trailer, which was the other end credit scene. What's your thoughts on this, Nolan? How you feel about it's this? It's gonna be crazy. It looks good. Sam Raimi's directing it. He's re- apparently it's like a horror movie. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna have a section that's scary because not all of that yeah. trailer had on shit. Look that scary, no. It well, it had. It looked like it has a section. Like the mirror dimension looks pretty <laughs> scary. Like what he's still in there. Yeah, that looked fucked up. Yeah, I'm excited. The villain seems to be evil Doctor Strange from What If, maybe. It's a little yeah. unclear. Um, because that Doctor Strange was a good guy at the end of What If. So maybe it's a version of that Doctor Strange who like wasn't a good guy. Whatever multiverse stuff, it could be what it, you know. It could be like seventeen versions of Strange as the villain. But I think it's really good. I'm not a big Doctor Strange fan, but like that trailer sold me. Yeah. Um. Is that it? That our final thoughts? We got anything else we want to bring up? I thought I had something, but I have lost it. Okay. Oh, I, I actually do have something. Fuck the Flash movie. Fuck you, you shitty multiverse Batman movie. In no way scary. home for life, dude. What did you think about Flash Thompson? Oh, Flash Thompson with his book? <laughs> with his fucking book! <laughs> he's actually... Okay, he's actually the one character I want to stay. Because, like, in the comics, when Peter goes to college, he kind of, like, leaves the high school cast, and then the main other characters, like, the main characters are Harry, Gwen, and then Flash. Well, Harry, Gwen, MJ, and Flash. And I would really like to see them do more things with Flash, because I think he's been funny in every single one of these movies. He's very funny. Um, And I would like to see more of him. He's also a really good character, actually, in the comics, and I kind of want to see them, like, do that. But yeah, I want to see him become the Flash. Yo, oh, yeah, because that's what he does. That's, I mean, he becomes Agent Venom, actually. Technically, what he does. The coolest version of Venom. Agent um, Venom. But I don't, I don't have any, uh, I don't got nothing else to talk about this movie other than it's fantastic. And if you're watching this, go watch it. Because even if you don't like MC Spider Man, I think you'll like this movie. I think it's that good. So, thanks for watching, good viewers. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Nerds Cantos.